Good afternoon to the honorable dignitaries and my lovely audience. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all in the second edition of Virtual Orange City Literature Fest organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation. I, Ms. Purva Bangale, will be the anchor for this session. This session is going to for 40 minutes. The session for today is A Journey of Love and Loss in the Land of the Lovers by Sakoon Singh Ma'am. Sakoon Singh Ma'am is the author of In the Land of Lovers, an illuminus of Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, and Punjab University, Chandigarh. Sakoon Singh Ma'am teaches literature and culture studies at Chandigarh. A recipient of the Fulbright Fellowship at the University of Texas at Austin, she has published her academic writings extensively, including Contribution to Cultural Studies in India by Rodledge. She has served on the editorial team of prestigious journals, dialogues, and E3W review of books. She has written pieces, articles, and opens on literature, art, culture, aesthetics for the Tribune, Hindustan Times, DNA, and the Quint. She is currently also associate fellow at IIS Shimla. Today, we have Ma'am Pushpinder Sayal with us, who will be moderating this session. Ma'am Pushpinder Sayal, PhD from Lancaster University, UK, is a professor and chairperson. Department of English and Cultural Studies, Punjab University, Chandigarh, where she has been teaching since 1978. She was also director at the Lucknow campus of English and Foreign Language University in 2010-11. In literature, she has taught and researched in African, Australian, and Indian writings. She has been associated with several projects with the British Council, CBSC, NCERT, IGNOU, etc., being deeply involved in teacher education and evaluation, and her current interests have explained to translation, six studies and literature in Punjabi. Now, I hand over the session over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Purva. Uh, am I audible to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes. You're clearly audible. Right. right. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm very happy to be here today um, uh, to discuss uh, this book. Um, I uh, give my greetings to the audience. I hope we have um, an audience from far and wide here today. And uh, I'm very happy also, particularly because we are representing Chandigarh in a way, you know, the two of us, uh, the author today and uh, me as the moderator. Uh, we are both from Chandigarh. And uh, the book that we are going to discuss today is also um, we can call it a Chandigarh book. Uh, it's a Punjab book. And within that, of course, uh, it's located in Chandigarh. So uh, so we, uh, we are going to have a great time uh, talking about our city to the people of Orange City and to everybody connected with the Orange City. Um, uh, ours is called the City Beautiful, by the way. Uh, that uh, name was given to it very early on. Um, whether it's retained that beauty or whether it's, uh, you know, got, got older uh, like the rest of us, um, uh, well, uh, we'll, we, we need to um, maybe see that. Uh, maybe the book takes us into uh, that journey. So uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is um, uh, a book which uh, retraces uh, several journeys. So I will um, start now. I think um, introducing uh, uh, Sukoon. Uh, Sukoon Singh. Uh, this is her debut novel, um, In the Land of the Lovers. And uh, it's subtitled the Punjab Kissa. So let's uh, start with the discussion then. Um, and uh, the, the first thing I would like to uh, bring up here uh, to initiate the, our discussion here today is um, uh, the title itself. Um, it says that there's a subtitle, a Punjab Kissa. So Sukun, can I ask you? Um, what what a kissa is really maybe you know we uh, we know of course in Punjab we know this term but uh, uh, we might need to redefine it and what is your take on the idea of kissa? Good afternoon, all. Yeah, I think it's a very uh, pertinent uh, point of departure. Uh, 
and it was a conscious uh, attempt on my part to somehow tether the title to you know the genre of kissa uh, because indian writing in english has its own antecedents but somewhere i felt that the book needed to tether itself to this genre which we all know in punjab it's a celebrated genre in punjab and uh, uh, i feel more than anything else like you know uh, the scholar uh, farina me talks about kissa is its resilience you know despite uh, the stepmotherly treatment shown to punjabi language and how you know there was complete absence of punjabi language uh, as far as the sphere of education was concerned for a very long time you know whether it was under ranjit singh or subsequently under the british uh the punjabi kissa was one genre which survived you know all these vicissitudes and uh, it continued to speak to people so to that extent uh, it's a genre that is loved and owned by people uh not just uh, you know in the academic sphere but it, it's a you know it's a genre which is loved and owned by people by people as such because naturally it speaks to them so somewhere i felt that uh, uh you know i needed uh, you know to go back to that connection mm. because uh, you know as you're familiar with the book there are these several stories the interlocking tales and i feel one way or the other they highlight some aspect of punjab and uh, what's really at the heart of this book you know uh, that i feel i've tried to capture as an as a as an author is uh, uh, you know something not very tangible but something that comes close to spirit of punjab so mm-hmm. that was you know the idea really mm-hmm. yes so uh, by the very word kiss uh, we introduce in a way the ethos and the language and all the all the things associated with that land right so so that is why it's a particularly good choice to have this word kissa and it also indicates uh, uh, the links between other sorts of stories the way in india uh, in different parts of india we uh, think of story like we call it katha mm-hmm. there is a you know these genres are there then dastan so mm-hmm. uh, so dastan kissa katha all these are our indian genres you know so yeah so we are trying to kind of you know evolve our own genres albeit in english i mean we sometimes use english uh, for that and uh, uh, but we are always trying to make a connection uh, between uh, our modes of storytelling you know Absolutely. and uh, and that language yeah that is how storytelling in english mm-hmm. uh, even though it's rooted in a cultural context becomes transformed also mm-hmm. because yeah. uh, you know one is not only borrowing from the english language but giving it back also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yes sure so. the empire writes back huh <laughs> yeah in- so uh, not not we don't even talk about the empire anymore actually these days you know uh, so um i'd like to uh, go further towards uh, uh, the discussion of uh, the content of the novel its theme etc uh, uh, yes so uh, could i ask you about uh, the major major themes particularly one very important aspect uh, which is that of the story of partition one of the stories that is interwoven here is uh, the experience of partition uh, would you like to uh, tell us about about how you have depicted uh, the that experience of partition and uh, uh, what it meant and uh, how it was lived through or remembered mm. yeah yes uh, so generation how how the, are- the story of yeah story of partition is uh, narrated 
and remembered. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I feel, uh, you know, as far as our generation is concerned, and I've seen it uh, play out not just in, you know, day-to-day -day experience, but even uh, in my academic life, uh, a text uh, like uh, The Shadow Lines, for instance, the way it spoke to students eight years ago, that thread is becoming more and more tenuous as time is passing. Yeah. You know, probably uh, mine is going to be the generation that's going to hold this thread more tangibly as compared to the coming uh, generations. And one has heard these stories. Uh, uh, you know, one's connection with the partition has not been as visceral as one's grandparents' connection, or for that matter, even the parents' uh, generation, which uh, kind of uh, lived these experiences more firsthand. But at the same time, uh, a connect with these stories. Uh, Uh, so really, you know, uh, in such magnitude, the household was affected. For these stories, tales from several quarters. And just to share, uh, you know, uh, a little bit about my personal connection with it, uh, you know, when we used to visit a grandparents' place during the summer vacations, there used to be this portrait of my great grandmother, who ha I haven't really met. Hmm. But uh, I partition uh, because she was separated from the family and she saw. Uh, her husband being gunned down in front of her and it was a trudge that uh, uh, you know of these circumstances in which she found herself so if you look at the character of uh, you know manji i would not say that uh, you know she's uh, direct situation where uh, people were uprooted in this way uh, that they were. And uh, uh, the great grandmother Manji's experience kind of echoed not that not only that absurdity, but also uh, the kind of psychological impact that event had. And I, I feel as a community, Punjabis are a very resilient lot uh, to the extent that uh, uh, the experience of partition uh, came and went and people moved on with their lives. To extent that uh, I feel now two generations down the non-fiction also happening essay form, interview form, there are all these forms that people are exploring. Even uh, materiality and collection of materiality. Yes. Uh, I yes. feel uh, that, uh, you know, my generation would be that last thread. Uh, yes. And just one little point I want to make here, uh, this, uh, uh, this ploy that I use in the novel where I show that Nanki loses her parents and therefore is raised by the grandparents. To a certain extent that, uh, you know, link in the chain that is missing for her is to put her uh, directly in touch with the grandparents, uh, you know, experience more directly perhaps mm. than would otherwise have been possible. Mm. So for her, you know, it becomes a uh, more uh, uh, near, more real, listening yeah. to the grandparents yeah. so directly. Yeah. So, so you yeah. you kind of eliminated one generation in between. <laughs> yeah, well, that is the right privilege. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Of course, of course. But uh, uh, but you know the uh, what is important. Uh, it seems uh, that uh, you know people would also like to. Uh, no, uh, is uh, how uh, the experience is very closely bound up with women's lives, you know, 
and uh, uh, how how uh, uh, the partition transformed or changed or uh, uh, you know affected uh, women's lives so much and what their responses were and uh, their resilience and then contemporary women today you know uh, how um, it's changed them and how they also then um, go ahead to make their own lives so uh, so if you can uh, tell us something about the uh, strong women characters in your uh, book because i think that's uh, very crucial in your book to have these uh, so many of these women characters there and it is through them that we see the the events unfold mm -hmm. Mm. yeah uh, uh, you know uh, it wasn't a thought out plan that uh, i would go about it like that because like uh, neil gaiman also says that when you sit down to write fiction mm. it's mm. something like driving a car in, in, on a foggy day Mm. There's just that much you can see ahead of you. Mm. And I think over planning will really ruin it. Mm. So there has to be an element of surprise mm. uh, to the extent that uh, it can surprise you as well. Mm. But it so happened that, you know, as you know, things unfolded, uh, the one vision that I always started was uh, of this young girl walking through the rain. That was the vision, really, uh, that this book starts with. And uh, if, you know, one looks at the introduction, that is what is happening. Now he's taking, you know, this walk in the rain. She's walking down from her college to back home, which is quite possible in the Chandigarh scenario. And mm. all that is really, you know, back of my college, you know, that area, that stretch. And I know that road very well. Uh, and it was actually, you know, it used to occur to me when I used to take these uh, walks in the Leisure Valley. Loads of those when I was writing my PhD, you know, <laughs> ma'am, you're aware of that time. So uh, it started with that vision, but mm. it so happened because Nanki was really in the middle of this experience. And she was the one who was, uh, you know, looking at this experience. Uh, we get to, I mean, she's like intervening between the reader and the wider experience as such. Uh, then as it became a more uh, conscious act, I realized that no matter what, you cannot avoid a position. So possibly, you know, it is, uh, you know, really my position as a woman of a particular, uh, uh, you know, context and circumstances that one is entrenched in, that uh, one tends to look at experience in that light. And it so happens that these characters are very intimate characters mm -hmm. that Nanki comes into, uh, you know, contact with all these women. And with each of these women's backstories, it opens the door into uh, one aspect of Punjab. Right, right. So, so uh, um, I wanted to ask you, since you are talking about walking in the rain, uh, you know, it has been said about the Victorian women novelists when they placed women at the center. It is said that when the Victorian woman uh, went out to take a walk, things started to happen, <laughs> you know. So uh, that, is, that is the first kind of uh, assertion, going out, taking a walk. Uh, are there any fictional characters, any literary characters whom you have in, had in mind when you were writing this or something that, you know, uh, you felt you, you were, were influenced by? It's inspired by Amita Ghosh, uh, definitely. I mean, I think I can't state it enough. Uh, and of all his works, uh, I think Shadow Lines mm, is a kind of work I would say that uh, maybe I would not have escaped the stamp of somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, he, he definitely has been an influence and uh, the way mm -hmm. in which, because he's trained as an anthropologist. So mm -hmm. somewhere, uh, you know, his uh, this whole ability to uh, deal with nuance and yet not be that overpowering narratorial voice mm. in that that he can you know show rather than tell mm. and uh, that is something that definitely must have creeped its way into uh, you mm. know my style i feel though yeah. i've tried to take out of that influence and i've tried to dip into of course of course know, uh, yeah. but 
Yeah, but you know, the grandmother in the shadow lines, you know, perhaps I think uh, that is, uh, that's a very big influence. Uh, yes. And there are other, other voices too. I think uh, out of all his novels, perhaps Shadow Lines is the one and that makes most uh, use of voice, you know, different sorts of narratives um, coming together and splitting apart also. Memory also going backwards and forwards, uh, you know. So these, these sorts of devices that he uses. What other voices have you tried to incorporate into your uh, fiction? In, into this book? What other voices have you tried to bring in? Uh, I mean, uh, it's not just, uh, uh, you know, intergenerational uh, mm. in the sense that uh, because of Troy, as I said, that I've used where uh, one generation is missing and uh, two generations are in touch. That is one. Uh, I've tried to break my own comfort zone also. Uh, as in, you know, one is bound by one's own, you know, immediate context and one finds comfort in that. I've tried to challenge myself as an author. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I didn't want to be bound by those examples. And I wanted mm -hmm. to explore. So there is Karmo's voice, which I've tried to understand from the inside. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Some people say that uh, it cannot be authentic if it is not your own. But I, I feel that as a writer, uh, you know, the most important thing as a writer is your ability to empathize. And uh, if one you know, allows oneself that and is able to somehow, uh, you know, show that through language, you know, uh, one, uh, I mean, one can never claim to know all, mm. but uh, one can, you know, try and come close to experiences of many, many different kinds. So mm. even Navid's experience for that matter, one had heard of as a child, if you remember that horrific case of female feticide mm -hmm. in a village near Patiala, where mm -hmm. uh, in the backyard of a doctor couple, they found like uh, tons of female fet fetuses. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was a time in the 80s when it was really a thriving trade. And we know that uh, doctors and, uh, uh, you know, these people were in collusion. Mm -hmm. So one has not witnessed it firsthand, mm -hmm. but let not one's privilege come in way because these things are out there yeah. so i guess it's it is yeah. ability to empathize which is yeah. why you know there are these many, yeah yeah many, in, in myriad situations and myriad yeah. characters oh that's very important that you've touched on this because uh, you know uh, chandigarh has been uh, kind of uh, often it has been documented that there are large number of these uh, prenatal uh, tests and uh, uh, these um, instances of feticide uh, in a city which is supposed to be more educated than uh, many other cities in the country. And yet the incidence of such cases is higher here. Uh, and the paradox being that the more educated people perhaps are, uh, you know, they have the means uh to uh, uh, to do this and uh, so they uh, they engage in such such a such a practice so so that is one of the seamy sides Sign, you know yes. yeah and uh, uh, so i yeah. try and uh, see it affects that lady psychologically you know mm -hmm. because uh, you know she again has a punjabi trait of resilience Mm. So how she gets into this uh, boutique business, which is again, you know, stereotype in Punjab. Mm. So Try, you know, to exploit that to show how she turns to vanity. Mm. You know, in in this whole, you know, uh, effort to deal with her grief. Yes, yes, yes. So she turns yes. to vanity. Yes, so I've often thought about this. Yeah, yeah. This uh, this sort of uh, uh, you know joy de vivre of the Punjabi woman or her uh, you know her resilience 
a love of um, you know um, uh, of dressing up and of good clothes and enjoying life you know which is often seen superficially as something you know that uh, uh, like perhaps you know punjabis like to show off or whatever but uh, i've always felt that uh, you know that sometimes maybe just the way in which one copes with some of the really really difficult uh uh realities uh, of of yes. life here yeah would you, would i felt you... that too you know mm. as i'm growing older i feel that i'm getting less and less cynical about yeah. yeah this whole thing because yeah. i can yeah. see what yeah. you know larger use it has mm. it's okay. not just uh, you know decorativeness for the sake of it yeah and uh, you know uh, one could be cynical about it but yeah. uh, you know as one grows older one feels that at times mm -hmm. these things are very important mm. you know how much yeah. we are willing to give into that yeah it is yeah. important yeah yeah so uh, so we would uh, uh, i i would also like to uh, ask you about some of the uh, the devices you have used um, with regard to language and some of the, uh, the use of gurbani for instance or the mirasi tradition would you like to say something about how you have gone about uh, constructing these uh, these uh, aspects of your book okay let me take the mirasis first as a device uh, uh, you know being in the academic profession the one good thing that we've been exposed to uh, though a lot of people are cynical about it is the youth festivals and mm -hmm. they have had this uh, heritage component for some years now uh, mm -hmm. which uh, allowed one to have a very intimate brush with some of the folk forms uh you know whether it was the nakals or it was uh, the mirasis or bhands mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know you know uh, uh, the acts that uh, these students from rural colleges put up mm -hmm. uh, it gave one uh, a very intimate feel of uh, you know these centuries old traditions that uh, you know have been working in punjab mm -hmm. uh, as far as my book is concerned uh i feel you know they kind of play the role like, some somewhat like the chorus yes it is a bit like the chorus yeah yeah it's like the chorus where they mm. wrap up the action i mean mm. they don't appear after every chapter no no but ah. uh, the, the divisions are broader mm -hmm. and uh, they come in where something of significance got wrapped and they have their own take on the state of uh, affairs yes, and yes. this racy dialogue this give and take which for me personally was a lot of fun constructing if you ask right. me what was the most fun part the mirasis was the yeah well it's a, it's an interesting it's so, an interesting experiment yeah for you to make you know and uh, as an experiment because i was also trying to i was also yeah yeah sorry yes yes ma'am go ahead uh, yeah Please so go ahead yes, i'm uh it's a bit like uh, you know sometimes it can be just a prestige or it can be a um you know for it uh you know bringing in another element into uh, the work but uh, certainly uh, certainly interesting to experiment with it you know now uh, uh, sukoon i would like to sort of uh, refer to uh, the audience if there are some questions from the audience if uh, some people would like to Yes, ma'am. I have posted the questions in the chat box. Okay. All right. All right. So the audience, and that uh, what? How do you think this book influences the thoughts of modern gay women uh, in Punjab? And what Sorry, inspired you to write? 
uh, I just lost a bit of your voice. Please, please, could you repeat? I'll, I'll just, I'll re just repeat this. Uh, the question is that how does this uh, book uh, uh, influence the lives of contemporary women in Punjab? And uh, also, the second question is, uh, what inspires you to uh, inspired you to write this book? So I'll take the second question first. Uh, yes. You know, be, being a literature person, one was exposed to, I mean, literary text, one del deals with literary text, that is one's bread and butter. But as an academician, uh, one is looking at literary text through the prism of theory. Mm. So uh, it was really my attempt uh, to go back to the very act. And uh, somewhere this was always simmering. Uh, you know, uh, to break uh, out of this whole uh, uh, prism of the way of looking at literary texts and go back to experience itself. Mm. So to a certain extent, it was a very conscious attempt to, uh, uh, to give up, uh, you know, a theoretical understanding and to dip into, uh, you know, more uh, fundamental ways of looking at things. So it was a bit bit of uh, an effort on my part because I was, I was discarding, I was trying to discard a way of looking at things. Uh, mm -hmm. To the second question as to how, uh, you know, it's going to speak to contemporary yeah. women. Uh, yeah. I feel that we tend to make these categories of history and today and yesterday. And mm -hmm. if more than anything else, I'm, you know, trying to show through this book is uh, time is like a river. You know, it's mm -hmm. really like a river. At mm -hmm. times, we are not conscious, we're not conscious as to how yesterday impacts it today, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you, you, we're not aware of that. Right. But uh, the, the, you know, one cannot really escape that stamp. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And there are contemporary characters as well, because yeah. Nanki's perspective yeah. is a contemporary perspective. Yeah. But yeah. I feel that through Nanki, I also, also want to show a Sufi consciousness and an, and an, and an attempt to, uh, you know, really connect with the, uh, the experiences that have been very vital for Punjab. Right. So, so there is a linked, uh, linked question to that, which is, have you witnessed any loss of love in the journey of moving towards becoming a strong woman? <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasn't anticipating this question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, it is uh, one in yeah, sort of yes. experiential, um, you know, area. Uh, what would you say? You know, yes. Love and loss is what you are writing about. I guess most of us encounter that and. Uh, it's uh, so much a part of uh, growing up, mm. you know, uh, that, uh, you know, at times the residue uh, is so tangible that, uh, you know, it leads you into this direction or, uh, uh, I mean, you've moved on and you've coped up, but, uh, you know, some, some residue somewhere will impact, uh, uh, you know, your creative life or in other ways it shows up and I think the best thing to do with that residue is to use it creatively. <laughs> yeah and, <laughs> and you know strength where does strength come from because uh, you know moving towards becoming a strong woman what does it uh, imply or what does it uh, involve you know uh, what sorts of uh, uh, sorts of challenges. Uh, could you could you find that in your main character, that uh, that sort of emergence through loss? I find you know some of the qualities in Nanki uh, very endearing. Those are qualities that uh, one would aspire for, because uh, she's strong without uh, being cynical or hardened. Mm. So I think that combination for me uh, works. Right. So, uh, so plus, yeah. plus her ability to rise above social conditioning. Mm. You know, for so, me, so that the is very interesting because the way she questions the idea of art, mm. 
Hmm. You know, she questions that suave director, that you know, hi-fi professor. She's hmm. able to only question him because somewhere she's stripping even her own understanding of art. You know, the layers of social conditioning. Even art education is a kind of conditioning. So she's, you know, trying to go back to the basic, and that demands a level of strength, and that demands a level of authenticity that uh, we see in her character. And uh, that is something for me, you know, uh, a very attractive uh, characteristics and something that one would want to aspire for. Interesting is uh, the journey that is essentially the journey that loss itself doesn't uh, make a person cynical or it doesn't make a person, you know, hardened. Rather, it uh, um, opens up, would you say, some kind of empathy towards others also, uh, mm. you know, and because you, we do see these things happening in the book, uh, the opening up towards uh, uh, certain other people uh, who, uh, uh, the opening up of empathy, you know, um, of compassion uh, mm. uh, through, through one's own uh, loss as well. You know, so that mm. that I think is something that uh, I I uh, think is there that you've said there in the book. Absolutely, because uh, uh, human life suffering and loss is inevitable. You know, one is mm. going to encounter that, but mm. it's really what you are going to make of it. Mm. What are you going to make of it? Yeah, that is what is important. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Important. So, so, yeah. So, um, so we have uh, more questions. Do we? Do we have some more questions? Uh, any other comments that uh, that have come up? Uh, I can't see any in the chat at the moment. But uh, yes, I mean the emails are going. Uh, the email of the author is there. Uh, uh, I think on the site, Purva, is it going to be put up? Yeah. Yeah. So, interested readers. I'm actually sharing it in the chat as well. I'm actually share. I've shared it in the Great. chat if somebody Great. wants to reach out. Great. Yeah. Great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, here is the email ID and uh, uh, readers and audience who are interested in uh, uh, chatting. Uh, with Sukoon or uh, asking any questions further um, uh, to this conversation, uh, you could do so. And um, it would be, uh, I mean, one can say a lot more because there are still some dimensions which we have not yet touched upon. And um, uh, and also uh, with regard to you know the uh, the city itself, how it has changed over time, and how you have uh, located the spaces of the city, um, mm -hmm. and also art and uh, some of the lost arts like the art of embroidery, you know that is accidentally discovered, you know, and the fact that a lot of art is lost, crafts are lost, traditional arts and crafts uh, of mm. different parts, but in Punjab, yes, where we have a loss of that kind also, you know, the loss of certain artistic traditions, craft mm. traditions. Mm. Uh, would you would you like to sort of, uh, uh, would you have a comment on that? It's, it's all there in the character of Jaginder, and where, you know, it really begins is this, uh, these intimate spaces of the village home where Juginder spends these long afternoons with the mother pouring over, you know, the fulkari threads and creating those wonderful embroidery pieces. For him, you know, the love of uh, embroidery really begins from there. Yeah. And uh, the way he's able to himself, uh, you know, build on that and improvise on that yeah. is my two cents also on how uh, you know art ought to be and is constantly evolving yes uh, you even know, with, through the even character with, of the, yeah, yeah. even with very little support from the bureaucracy uh, or the yes. state which uh, which doesn't uh, encourage uh, 
um, all kinds of art, you know, they're just some fashionable trends uh, which are uh, which get get into the limelight, and uh, a lot of the art uh, is ignored or neglected um, by the sponsors even. But you know, it's uh, very interesting that here we find a character who a man who does embroidery. You know, we have uh, um, you know uh, mm. few men who who do uh, uh, embroidery and knitting and these kinds of things. But you see, the thing is that we do we mm. don't have a gender divide among the traditional crafts people. You know the weavers and uh, the artisans, you know. Uh, so these are sort of artificially created, these divides, because um, anybody can uh, can actually, uh, but somehow in our, uh, in our stereotypical view of um, the people who do poetry, you know, we don't see men. So that is a very, very interesting character uh, who does embroidery and not mm. just does embroidery, but he recovers an old, uh, some some very very uh, beautiful patterns, old patterns, you know. And yes, uh, yes. so that that is uh, lots of fact that he improvises. That that yes. is very important. He yeah, builds on that because yeah. he has an itinerant life. You know, he's a soldier, yeah. so he's picking up influences and adding yes. on to. It. So. Yes. A soldier doing embroidery. You know? <laughs> Too many stereotypes. <laughs> Too many stereotypes. Yeah. yeah. That's so shall lovely. we wrap up for the day? Yeah. I think it's that's, 44. That's, that's lovely. That's beautiful. And, uh, uh, um, you know, people who read Sukoon's book will certainly find a lot of these interesting uh, um, descriptions of, um, uh, you know, of related to tradition to tradition of Punjab, to the atmosphere and the land of Punjab. So, uh, so uh, I would, um, you know, I think, um, conclude our conversation over here uh, with that. Um, so anything that, uh, Purva, that you would like to add at the end of it, or uh, should, should we then uh, conclude this session? Ma'am, we should conclude this session now. All right. Okay. So thank you very much, Sukoon. And uh, uh, thank you very much for, for uh, being here. And, uh, uh, and Sukoon, I wish you the best for your next venture. Uh, I also wish you uh, good luck with this one, that uh, you, may your readers grow. And, uh, you know, may our, uh, 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 you know, uh, knowledge about Punjab or experience about uh, of it um, grow with the uh, writings like these. So, um, so I'll just you come back and uh, thank you so much, uh, you know, Shpindasyal ma'am, because every time I converse with you, at times, you know, I'm, I have a new insight about my own book, <laughs> which is the most wonderful part, because, you know, with you, it's always more like loud thinking, which I really, you know, love, you know, this, uh, these sessions that we always have. And I think today it was no different. I'm glad, uh, you know, that uh, these barriers of technology, we're able to now thank be you. comfortable with them. Thank and you. Purva, thank you. Purva, thank you very much for, you know, yes, your thank thank you. thanks to you. And thank you, Orange City Literature Festival, for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so, you to the audience. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this lovely conversation. I also thank the publisher speaking, Rupa. On behalf of Orange City Literature Festival, we sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for this session and knowledge shared with us. I am sure our audience attending with us was delighted to witness it. Also, I would like to thank the publisher and hope you all have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty years of existence, two universities, 23 educational institutes, 
offering 137 courses. Rai Sony Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.